Since he made Italian ice, I thought I would make the logical or the known derivative of it. Uh, after Ita Italian ice has been around for years and years and years, and then somebody said, hey, what would happen if we added a little ice cream mix, a little cream to Italian ices? And that opened up another industry. In the world, it's not as well known, but it's, you'll taste it, it's really good. It's called cream ice, cream ice. Another name for cream ice that you're more familiar with is sherbet. Sherbet has been around for a long time too. Sherbet is simply Italian ices with a little cream in it. Just as easy to make. And a friend of mine in South Florida, Evan if you're listening, uh, made a fortune and all he sold was cream ice. Uh, he's got three of these now, three of the 24s now, two shops, lines every night, all he sells is cream ice. And initially, the flavors of sherbet or cream ice were uh, orange, raspberry, lemon, cherry, but now the cream ice industry has gone through the roof. You get cookies and cream, pistachio, toasted almond, uh, everything. So today I thought we'd follow up his ices with cream ice and make something I've never made before. Uh, I think we'll try this. If it works, it works. It's Bailey's cream ice with real Bailey's. Uh, so if any of you have a problem with the uh, alcohol, then don't have it. Uh, he'll eat it anyway. Oh, Mormons, you know, he'll eat it. All right, so the ingredients in cream ice, cream ice is a very simple formula for your machine. It's three, two, one. That's cream ice. Three quarts of water, two quarts of ice cream mix or cream. I'm sorry, two pounds of sugar and one quart of ice cream mix. Three, two, one. Three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, one quart of mix. Steve, I need mix. Coming up. <laughs> we have everything. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Three quarts of water. Hi. Two pounds of sugar, one quart of mix. We call it mix. It's, uh, when he brings it in, it comes in bladders. Everybody, is everybody in this country? Uh, so you have no problem getting mix from a dairy. It comes in a carton or a case with two bladders in it. Each bladder is 10 quarts. Uh, and they run about 22 to $25 each. Right over here. This is what they look like. And uh, you get two to a box, and they're 10 quarts, and essentially it's cream. Uh, it, when we work, I call it cream. Uh, the word mix is, is sort of a misnomer, uh, but it is a blend of uh, whole milk, cream, skim milk, solids, all that stuff. Uh, what? What percent do we use? Well, I'll tell you what percent I use. What percent do we use? Ten. Ten percent. Lemon ice. For everything. Everything. Oh, try it. It's good. And by the way, he was surprised. I think you'll like it. Who makes the best ice cream in the world with ten percent mix? Me. And them. Free, fat, free, cholesterol, those people. free, sodium free. Now they make the world's best ice cream. 10% mix. How can you do that? haagen is 16%. Uh, ben and Jerry's 16%. Uh, and then there's everything in between. There's 10%, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 22. So why 10? Why 10? Think about it. Why 10? Now, is that the same as soft No, no. No, we don't mention... Garbage. Soft serve is garbage. No, soft serve, what is soft serve? 8% or something? Or? Well, you can get 10 and 5. Yeah, 10 and 5, right? Uh, but it's junk, right? It's, you even sell that, don't you? We do. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So we're going to make um, 
I think he uses 10%, actually. I'm not sure. I use 10. I'll have to ask him when he comes in. Huh? We, nobody knows, right? This mix is made in Florida. You get mix from two places. You get mix from Dairy Mix over in Sarasota or Clearwater. Where, where are they? Sarasota. Uh, or you get it from Ice Cream Club in South Florida, Boynton Beach. Uh, both very good. They both have the gradations of butterfat percent, uh, so you can get what you want. I tried 12 at one point a few years ago, and uh, I, I know you find this hard to believe. I threw the ice cream out. Uh, it was too gummy for me. Too gummy. Pay no attention to the dog. All right, so it's three. However, uh, I started life with a six-quart machine. Uh, is this it? Yeah, that's it. I started life with a six-quart machine, and that was my formula, three, two, one. Today, I'm using a 12-quart, so we'll go up a little bit. Uh, I only brought enough for my three, two, one, but we'll stretch it a little bit. Uh, what was the question? What percent butterfat do you use here? Is that 10 or 12? 10%. 10, okay. Because it's so hot and so humid, you already told them, uh, that people eat flavor. Nobody walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, oh, that's the best butterfat I ever ate, or I can't wait to come back tomorrow because like, and I'm talking against my own infinite overrun control. I can't wait to come back tomorrow because I love the air content. People eat flavor. Boy, that mint was minty and fresh, and the chips weren't chalky because they were good quality. People eat flavor. Brown sugar dissolve in water, too? They don't have to. Does Will it? it? Yeah, sure. Okay. But you don't have to. Let the well, I, I combined it. Oh, it's that much. What? Yeah, no, it's ahead. not. Oh, it's just a little bit. But uh, I mixed it in with white sugar. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I've never made this before. And when I was leaving my shop last night, uh, I saw a, uh, a little half bag of brown sugar, because I use brown sugar a lot in stuff we make. And I thought, well, let's put that in. That can't be bad. So this is uh, an experiment. And you guys are the guinea pigs, but it'll be good. Uh, so we have here four quarts of water instead of three, because it's a larger capacity machine than, than normal. So we'll add a little more water. Uh, <laughs> And then sugar, I've mixed a little brown sugar. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It was maybe a quarter of a pound of brown sugar with a pound and three quarters of white sugar, cheap white sugar. And although Steve prefers that we mix it outside of the machine, uh, I don't. Uh, if, if you were sitting in my shop right now, I would have poured the sugar right down the gullet with the water, uh, not like this. I would have poured the water in first, turned the machine on, then poured the sugar in, uh, because I've got the greatest mixer in the world in here. So to me, this is redundant, uh, not even as efficient as that, but so be it. If you have any questions, just ask away. So we'll add this uh, sugar-water mixture. And your machine comes with this little guard up here. Oh, stop. Who cares? <laughs> and we need some uh, mix. How much mix? You said one, one quart. So we'll add like a quart pistol? and a quarter to, uh, by the way. This is a good time to bring this up. Is this, why do we get into this business? We get into this business for profit, right? Right? I mean, you're going to make a, a boatload of money here. Yeah. But there are two other reasons to get into this business that are equally important if you want to be in the business for a long time. Profit is number one. You know, count de Monet. We're going to count the money every week. But what's the second reason that we're in this business? Fun. Fun. This is fun. Uh, actually, that's the third. The second reason is art. This isn't, it's science, I guess, but it's more art. 
See, I don't know the exact dimensions now, but this is so hard to screw up this product because really when you're adding things like cream and sugar and flavors, a little of this, little of that is going to be your personal best anyway. So you may like something uh, a little less sweet than I do. I prefer my ice cream really sweet and flavorful. I like that flavor just punching in the face. So there's art that's involved here. If it were pure science, uh, you'd buy my book and you wouldn't even need to sit here. You'd just go home and say, okay, a cup, a quart, an ounce, and that's it. But it's not that way. It's, uh, and Steve and I try to work that way so you see that. The real life, little of this, little of that, taste it, adjust it. It's like baking. You probably bake, right? It's like baking. Little of this, little of that, and then before you finish it, needs a little salt. And so you add a little salt. So that's the deal. A uh, measuring cup would be right here. Okay. Oh, no, right here. Otherwise, I'll get you Sammy's. What? Otherwise, I can get you Sammy's measuring cup for a food. <laughs> All right, what'd we say? A little more than a quart, right? Yeah. Okay, this is a quart. Oh, actually, we can go to 36 here, which will probably work out fine. I don't think I ever saw a measuring cup, 36 ounces. Okay. These are a little um, unwieldy. They're, they take a little getting used to, and we're going to have a Q&A uh, before or after lunch, and there's a, an invention Steve is coming up with that will make handling these a little easier. Uh, I'm not in favor of it. You know, you, you work with it, you work with it. You, why rely on something else? But that's another story. Okay, so they all have a pop top, and they are jiggly. <laughs> it's a funny word, jiggly. They're jiggly. There's a uh, water bed in many. Uh, right, that's right. It's like your old water bed. Yeah. The one I still have. <laughs> so we'll add uh, a bunch of this stuff. And if you drank this, you did, right? If you drank this, you would love it. It's, it's absolutely, right? What's it taste like? Tastes like, yeah, it's great. And if you're a coffee drinker, put this in your coffee, and uh, you've got like a dessert coffee every time. Put some whey isolate powder in it, and you got something really healthy. Uh, uh, so what do we got in the machine? We have our sugar and water, and now we're going to add our cream. So I'll turn it on to get it nicely mixed, uh, which will be nice. Correct. It mixes while it's churning. Churning. It, yes. <laughs> Whatever. What? I put the water in. Okay. Okay. I did notice there's a little uh, residue here. And I don't want to miss that. <laughs> don't step in it. See, that's why I run a class, because they clean up after me. Yeah, well, the other way of looking at it is the fun thing about running your own business is you do everything. All right. So now all that's left, now what do we have? We have sort of plain vanilla cream ice. So I thought we would add something that if you're going someplace special or you have a private party, uh, maybe you would add some Baileys and make Baileys cream ice. So I've got Baileys here. Uh, the bottle is just one of my bottles from the store that I make vanilla in. But because it's dark, you can't see through. But this is Bailey's. And how much are we adding? Uh, whatever's in here. <laughs> it's not two quarts. It's probably one and a half or so. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, I predict, by the way, this is going to be amazing, but I don't know. 
affect the freezing? Well, the it's, it is a great question. How much will that alcohol, but really Bailey's, affect the freezing? Interesting, Bailey's is what? It's Irish whiskey and cream when you buy it in the store. So really, you're, you've got cream. Now here's the deal on the alcohol. Everything in the universe is molecules, little tiny round balls, you know, that they show you on TV. Little tiny balls, everything, his hat, that cup, this table, all the food you eat, everything is molecules. Alcohol is molecules too, but those little things won't freeze. You can't freeze alcohol, everybody knows that. You can bring it way down, but it's not gonna freeze. So what do we do? We take the molecules of this, this is the cream. So those molecules will surround the molecules of liquor, of alcohol, and they will suspend it. So we're not freezing the alcohol, but we are suspending it. And that's what will enable us to use it in products like cream ice or ice cream. Uh, you're suspending it within the other molecules. And in fact, the molecules in cream look for it because that one won't freeze the alcohol. So they look for it and they surround it. So all the, everything that comes out is a blend of alcohol and cream and the alcohol has suspended the, the, uh, uh, the, the cream has suspended the alcohol within it. So that's why it, is, it freezes. So it doesn't really freeze. The cream freezes, but He's not the alcohol. An Italian but ice. It, it's it'll appear that way. Irish cream. And it doesn't take longer? Well, you've got all these great questions. His question is, does it take longer to freeze, right? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because it's fighting. It's fighting it. It doesn't want to freeze. It can't freeze. So the... The cream is helping it to do that. It does take a little longer, not a lot. I had an older Emery Thompson, 24 quart, older. And a batch of this would take about 34 minutes. Now I have a brand new Emery Thompson. Thanks to my good, no, I pay the same thing you do. I have a brand new one and it takes less than half of that. So. Steve, in the Q&A, I want to ask him why it takes so much shorter time to make my product now with a new machine than it did with an older machine. And it's significant. I, I text him every day that I make ice cream when I'm making 100 gallons. I make 100 gallons in a day, in about six hours. And I text him and I praise him because it, I could never do that before. I could never make a hundred gallons of ice cream in a day. Just me. But now, it's not bad. I get time to uh, go to the beach afterwards. <laughs> uh, but I do. You know I text you all the time yeah. thanking you. A hundred gallons. It's for amazing. Making, for me making a hundred gallons. In no time at all. I have to make about 300 to 380 gallons a week. Luckily, <laughs> fortunately. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, I have to thank Jay, one of our students this week, for uh, teaching me to do this. Now, how about Yes. Uh, the question is, how about a fuller alcohol, fuller proof alcohol, like tequila or rum? I use a lot of rum. Uh, everything's the same. The world doesn't change. It's still a molecule of alcohol that won't freeze, surrounded by molecules of cream that will freeze. So what about it? Italian ice? It'll still work. Yeah, of course. But you won't get this to work in any other machines. Uh, if you look at any recipes, they don't get cold enough. They don't get cold enough. Even uh, there's uh, scientists who write books, and they'll always tell you add the alcohol as it's coming out because the machines don't have enough strength to freeze it. As Jeff is saying, we're not freezing the alcohol; we're putting it in suspension, surrounded by a frozen product. 
but the other machines just turn to mush. So if you're going to do alcohol ice creams, you can do this. Oh! Now, before you serve this, as soon as you take it out, I'm going to bring Christy in because I forgot to show people how to eat this product properly. In she's a squeeze gonna, cup we're going to yeah, put it? Yeah, she's going to do a... Cream ice? No, just, just the one. Okay, okay. She's going to do a okay. fast demonstration. Okay, okay. Boy, that's good. Is it? Oh, man. Uh, You're adding alcohol into this. Do you have to have any certain licenses or are there... Where do you live? Is that what it's depending on... Well, where do you live? It'll be Tennessee. It will be Tennessee? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> Eventually, I live in Tennessee. Did you guys pick that up on the mic because I didn't hear it? We got it. Uh, okay. The question refers to liquor licenses. Each state is different. In Florida, there are 45 categories of liquor license. Everything from a carryout to a full-serve pour bar to a catering hall to a country club to a yacht to hotels. There's 45 of them. So you just have to check and see where you are. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, a, uh, well, every state is different, so we don't know them. Actually, New York State, my old state, which is the most restrictive state on earth, uh, oh, never, has, never, the, never, never. has the um, most laxed rules about alcohol. I've heard urban legend uh, of somebody, it might even be in this room, about uh, asking about putting alcohol in ice cream and was told that if you make bourbon vanilla ice cream and you put vanilla ice cream in the machine and you put bourbon in and you serve it in a dish, that's okay. But if you take that bourbon vanilla ice cream and put it into a blender and turn it into a milkshake, that's a cocktail. I'm sorry, you can't sell cocktails. Now, Unless that you're properly licensed to sell them. Isn't that the stupidest law you've ever heard? So, no, no, it's not. <laughs> it, well, uh, you don't no, have a liquor not. license. Whether I have one or not you don't need it. is irrelevant. Yeah. But in your instance, it is important because you're going from a product that people will eat recreationally to a drink that they're going to consume large quantities of. Right. So I would make a distinction. Uh, except there. most of us consider a milkshake to be a a treat, and we're not going to drink large quantities of it. We're going to have they drink They drink bottles of NyQuil at night to get high. <laughs> True. We're going to talk in the Q&A. I want to bring up CBD oil, uh, which is getting a lot of press. And Jeff and I have not discussed it, but in just cursory, I can tell that we have uh, different opinions of it. So it should be pretty interesting. I don't know his opinion. Mine is still evolving. I haven't reached a decision. But uh, there's a lot of things going on uh, that's interesting. This and other products, we can talk about it if you want at any time about pint sales. Um, while Jeff's waiting for this to be done. Pint sales are through the roof. Um, it, uh, haagen and Ben & Jerry are two companies we put into business, and they've always sold pints. They're now up to $5.13 a pint. Um, my customers are getting seven, eight, nine, even in major cities, $10 a pint. And, and part of it is because of the millennial age group, which uh, I, 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 tend, I will make fun of them. But I'll tell you right now, we were just reading an article this morning in the paper that 60,000 new businesses were started alone in Manhattan uh, in 2018 by millennials. 60,000 businesses. They are the new entrepreneurs. We wondered where they were going to come from. We all, us baby boomers, thought, well, the world's going to hell in a handbasket without us. Well, it isn't. Uh, they are... Um, Starting businesses or starting, I mean, a, a large number of my customers fall into that age group, and they're starting spectacular businesses, and, and they work hard, they work long, and the pint sales have become part of it. I almost think it's like craft beer. Uh, craft beer came along, it used to be you could go out on a Friday afternoon, buy a, a six pack of Bud, Bud Light 550, and that's what you had for Friday night. Now it's nine, 10, 12 dollars. Uh, $14 for a pint of locally sourced and produced beer with interesting names like Wicked Blue Moon or whatever name you come up with. But the point is, it's looked upon as a reward. Uh, we would look at it, my age group would look at it and say, $12 when I can get Bud for $5.50? Uh, they look at it and say, I've had a hard week, I've worked really hard, I've done really well, I deserve this. And that has sold these beers and driven the price up. 
which is all good uh, because the economy is good. People have jobs, they're making money. So in ice cream, the same thing has happened. We were always stuck. When ice cream was $2.50, we could not improve the quality. Uh, we made, I, I'll hide the name. My idea of making strawberry ice cream before Jeff and I got together was to open up, this is called a number 10 tin. It's uh, three quarts of heavy, gloppy, lowest grade strawberries in corn syrup, red dye 40, and enough chemicals to keep you, uh, you know, going until the, you know, the 27th century. And this is what we called ice cream. We didn't know any better. And not only did we may have known better, but we couldn't afford better because all we could get was two and a quarter for a scoop of ice cream. Now I'd say the average scoop of four ounces, which I like to say is a quarter pound. Jeff would sniff it and say, that's, that's only a spoonful. It's a kitty size. It's a kitty size. But the point is the prices have gone up and uh, to the point where uh, we can afford to make ice cream for going to the supermarket and buying fresh frozen strawberries and blueberries and putting in Baileys. We couldn't do that 10 years ago. The quality has gone through the roof and the reason it has is because that's what people demand and the quality, uh, the, the price has gone up to where we can afford to do it. So the ice cream business, which was always a good business, you've got a steady income, it's nice, has become a huge money maker. I mean, I, I have, you know, I'm not bragging, it's just a fact, but I have made more millionaires than anybody I know uh, out of selling ice cream and ices. Every store, every machine I sell is going to generate 11 jobs. That's the average amount of jobs working in an ice cream parlor. Well, you know, I mean, how many businesses, I mean, you can go into printing, you know, greeting cards and you're not going to make, uh, starting out, you're not going to have 11 employees. So it's, it's, it's really exciting from that standpoint. But, and, and the pint sales have become, again, like the craft beer. Hey, I deserve this. $9 a pint, so what? Uh, and I better bring one home for Paula, too. So I'm spending $18, but I'm doing it once or twice a week. It's a reward to me. That's the theory. Um, I asked, I, I teach at Penn State once a year at the end of the month, this month. And last year I asked the head of Penn State, Dr. Robert Roberts, I said, my customer, haagen Ben & Jerry, why do they only sell in pints? He said, because you'll pay $7 for a pint of ice cream, but you won't pay $28 for a half gallon. And, and that really is the thing. $7 is affordable to me. And even 14 because I wouldn't dare come home without one for Paula, uh, a different flavor. Uh, so the, it's, it's just, it's not even thought about. Um, one other thing about the millennials, you may not have known this unless I've said it before, is um, they don't have the expenses that we do. The, the two things that we saw as priorities in our life when we were that age was a car and a house. And they're using Uber in the urban cities and there's no rush to buy a house. Uh, they're living in very nice apartments. And they default on their student loans anyway. Well, we're not going to go that way. Uh, but they, they do have a lot of discretionary income. So I'm hiding this. Uh, so that's uh, why it's, it's so great that we can do all these different products. Let me get Christy in. I want to just show you how to eat a, uh, an Italian ice. Hey, Christy. Okay, you want to try this? It's... Uh, Bailey's cream ice. Give me one second. Let me just. Okay, I want to hang demonstrate. on. Hold on, it's right here. Because when you call up for uh, when you call up for parts, you're going to get Christy on the phone, and uh, nobody calls up for parts. No, they don't. So she's very lonely. But uh, a few minutes ago, Christy did not eat a lemon ice. This is the way you eat it. And, and, and a lemon ice is a generic term. I know this is Bailey's, but we we would call it Bailey's lemon ice. Cream ice. Yes. So the proper way to eat it is a squeeze cup. And you just squeeze it from the bottom and eat it. No spoon, no cup. It's so simple. And you could buy a thousand of these for about $20 or, or less. They're so cheap. And if you call them up and ask for a squeeze cup, unless you're from, they're from Manhattan, they're going to look at you like a deer in the headlights. It's a pleated, like a lady's dress, it's a pleated water cup. So don't ask for squeeze cups if you're in Michigan. They go, huh? Just say, I want a pleated water cup. And the only people making them are solo that I am aware of. Okay. So come on up and have it. Thank you very much. Good job. Any part sales today? She just said it's the bomb. Good. Okay.
Thank you. Bill, it has alcohol in it. Yeah. What's all that? Same? What's what? Same thing? More, yeah. I, uh, okay. More. Now, after this, we're going to just take a quick uh, 10, 15 minute, 10 minute uh, bathroom break. Everybody get up, stretch your legs, walk around, uh, come back in 10 minutes. I'll make another flavor, and then we're going to do a Q&A. That's good. What part of Tennessee? Um, like Maryville, around Knoxville. Oh, Maryville? Yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. Sure. Have you tried it? No. No. I'll wait and see if anybody survives before I try. <laughs> Where is Nina Marie's? We'll be in North Carolina. North Carolina, whereabouts? Near Winston Salem. Okay. Got to give a plug. Town. Got to turn around. Give a plug for your business. Nina Marie's Italian Ice opening soon. It actually looks like ice cream, doesn't it? It does look like ice cream. It's a winner? Did you try it? No. Okay. Well, they say it's a winner. Well, let's try it. You should try it. I can't. What? A little bit you can have. Not, but not taste. What? I don't drink alcohol. But it's a taste. No. Since when? 1999. Oh, you want some? Just a little bit. I don't drink alcohol. I just want to give it a taste. There's a place in uh, Austin that does uh, it's called Amy's Ice Cream. That's me. Yeah, uh, Amy's. Uh, they, she was a professor at. Uh, That's good. Rutgers, uh, when I met her, and and they he got likes going. it. Great place. He's gone. Sammy, none of this for you. Come on, sweetie. You can come out there. You can come during the Q and A. Let's go. Good girl. Let's give some to Paula. Yes, yes. A big portion. We need to make her happy. That'll give do. her a spoon with it. Uh, let me take one more for Olga. Crystal will get hers when she transfers it. Yeah. It's pretty good. Okay, everybody like it? It's good? Pretty refreshing. It, it is 10%. Right